Hello and welcome to the channel. Now, a while ago I did some uh, reviews of flash modifiers and they've lots and lots of views. It's gone down really, really well. I, I reviewed all of the, uh, the different styles of flash modifier uh, that I could find and um, decided which one I thought was best. Um, after that, after some comments in the comments section, I redid the test outside as filling flash and decided which would be the best. Now the links are in the description to both of those videos. Um, but somebody said, have you tried a Cobra flash modifier? Now I'd never heard of a Cobra flash modifier. So I've got one, here it is. All the way from the good old US of A, a Cobra flash modifier. Now, this was designed by photographers. Some photographers decided that they couldn't find the flash modifier they wanted and so they went about designing one themselves. Now what they found was that flash modifiers on the market scattered light all over the place but they didn't actually push enough light forward so they were having difficulty controlling it. So I've got one to review here for the channel and Paul, Paul brought his Fuji along and he's going to give it a go too. We're going to see what we think of this. So Paul, what's inside? This yeah. is the Cobra flash modifier. And first and foremost, doesn't it look cool? I mean, look at the lines on that. That looks like it should be a Porsche or a Lamborghini or something. I mean, often flash modifiers <laughs> just look yeah. rubbish, don't they? They just, they, 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 they just yeah. look like a bit of old card or something. Yeah. But they've really thought about that because actually as a pro photographer, when I go over, most of the time I can't use a flash modifier because it just looks Amateur, it looks, it looks like that's you made trouble. it yourself. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But this, have a feel of that. It's just yeah. like silicon nice. and smooth yeah. and that matte black on the back there. It's just so touchy-feely. It's, it's great. It's very nicely made. It yeah. is nicely made, isn't it? Have you seen it these is. little clips? In yeah, here? yeah. Now that's because this is the clip mm. that comes with the flash modifier. And this is quite an ingenious little thing because one of the big problems I had with a lot of flash modifiers was the time it took me to, to, to put them on and then, then they were head heavy and whatnot. Um, but this, you see, just see. you get your camera yeah. there and you, you, you leave this, which is why it's black I presume, because most yeah. flashes are black. You leave it attached attached there. You just, you just push the silicon over and you leave that attached. That's and it. then when you want your flash modifier, these little clips here look, go on, have a go. It should just slot on and, and clip into place. Job done. It's ready That's to it. go. Ah, we are. now hang on a minute. That's, that's, oh, that's yes. a bit head heavy on yours. It is. Now on my Nikon, I don't have that happening. But no. this is a small Metz flash that you, it is. that you use on the Fuji. Yeah. And you can't lock it up? I can't lock it up. No. Normally it's no problem at all, but but then again, if you're careful, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. <laughs> um, well, as I say, this isn't a problem with my speed uh, light, but um, that is something, you know, you know wor worth mentioning. Yeah. But um, you're just going to have to be careful. That it isn't I think most flash guns have got locks. Why this one hasn't, I do not know, but still. Yeah, so that's uh, Ernie in the background um, uh, who's missing out on the video and he's just uh, barking his <laughs> approval of the Cobra flash modifier. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's take it off and uh, let's, let's go and take some... Oh, let's see what else comes with it first of all. Because yeah. you don't just get that, you get that. Right. And that's a band and, I, and, and, and I'll tell you why in a second. And this beautiful little sort of wallet case, can you see that there? With Cobra written there, contains not just one, not just two, but six, a full half dozen filters. And these aren't just any filters. No, they're not. These are Lee filters. Lee filters, Lee filters no less. The very best, some would say. And what happens here? is that these filters, and there, are, and there are sort of three tungsten filters, three different um, strengths of tungsten filter, and then three special effects. There's a blue, a red, and a green. And what happens is this here 
also acts as a filter holder. Look, you can clip your filter in there, yeah. and now you've changed the colour of your flashlight. Why would you want to do that? To make it look better. Well, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, first of all, the special effects, if you're doing... Um, yeah. Uh, if you want something with, uh, let's say you're lighting a background, yeah, and you want the background to go blue or red or green or for, for some sort of special effect, yes, you, you you can you can adjust yeah. for that. If yeah. you are photographing somebody against um, uh, a, a background, and often at conference, um, conference organisers and, and AV crews love backgrounds to be sort of flooded with like blue light, yeah. and it's all um, you know sort of uh, blue there, and it, 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 you know. If you wanted to tone that down, you, you know, you could dial a blue filter in uh, and rebalance the light for the flash. So you, but the, the big thing is, for me, not so much those special effects, blue, green and red, but, but the, the basic tungsten, colours. The basic yeah. tungsten ones. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times I've been to like a social event, a dinner, an award ceremony, and they tend to be held in lovely old grand hotels, but old grand hotels with, with hideously colour cast tungsten light. So it's like yeah. really deep orange. Yeah, and you put the flash on to, 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 to photograph people yeah. and you've then got a choice. Um, do you want to expose for correct skin tones or do you want oh, yeah. to expose for a, a, a nice uh, balanced background? Okay. You can't really have both. No, and that's obviously true. Yeah, if yeah. I expose for the background being tungsten, then with, a, uh, with, with an ordinary Normal balanced flash, flash yeah. the people are gonna be blue. That's true. So oh, I can't do that. So I have to balance for the flash which means the background goes very orange, yellowy, yeah. orangey, yeah. muddy, kind of amber That's colours. True. And you've seen them probably yeah. lots and lots. You know, you've taken pictures in a, a, older settings and, and the backgrounds just go a very sort of muddy kind of amber colour. That's true. Um, but yeah. by putting one of these filters in yeah. and then rebalancing um, uh, your white balance, uh, you can fine tune it. You can fine tune it. So, yeah. so in actual fact, you can take that tungsten balance out of the background, and I think it's that's it. really, really good. It is. It is. I've seen some other, you know, like um, the spherical, the, you know, the domes. Yeah. And they often have a, an amber dome, but it's too strong. It's way, way, way mm. too strong. It, it, you know, and having it's three true. different um, powers Strength. of them, strengths in, you know, yeah. you, it goes from, from, you know, from that. From, well, that's sorry, that's the red one. It goes from. Don't put the red <laughs> one on. Uh, it goes from that quite strong one yes. to, to a, a very light one and, and as a medium. And so, you know, I think that's a really good thing it is. to have yeah. in the kit. So, good idea. I think we should take the camera out, mm -hmm. go and see what we think. I'll take the yeah. Nikon and, uh, and we'll take your Fuji. And you've just bought something um, that you like to do portraits on. What have you put on that? It's the um, Zeiss 50mm macro. The size 50mm macro. You like yeah. using that for um, portraits, do you? Uh, for some. 2.8 lens? <laughs> Either this one or the um, 90F2 Fuji. I use oh, that sounds, one or the yeah, other. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like the people that love those uh, portrait lenses. Now I have got a video about portrait lenses. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Um, if you haven't seen that, it's definitely, definitely worth mm. a watch. Uh, I... Um, I talk about what I think is the best portrait lens out there. Yes. Okay, right, <laughs> let's, uh, let's head out. We're gonna do a couple of pictures in here mm -hmm. and we'll head no, out no, and no, see how it fares outside. outside. And, yeah. um, and, and uh, I'm gonna put the results on screen, so That's let's it. go. Yeah, we'll do that. So Paul gets to grips with his Fuji and he starts by doing us a control picture. Just the flash, no modifier, just the flash. Let's have a look at it. There we go. Oh dear, it's not doing me any favours, has it? Look at those bags under my eyes. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. That's what you'd expect. So let's get the uh, Cobra flash modifier on and Paul sets about a few pictures from the same position. Is it going to be any different? Let's have a look. Wow, is it different? Oh my gosh, look at that. The softness of that light, the skin tones, and it really has taken that harshness away. Okay, we're back. We've got our flash guns. We've been out there doing <laughs> some uh, some flash modifying with the help of our Cobra flash modifier. It goes that way around, but that just looks so cool and it says Cobra there. It looks so um... Right, what did you think? I liked it. It did a very good job. I 
certainly consider buying one. It, 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 it's much better than anything else that I've used like it. Yeah, it does a great job. I agree. I think when you put, we, we put the pictures on screen. Let, let's mm. just put two pictures on screen right now, you know, right here and now of um, yeah. a picture of yours truly. Uh, yeah. But one is just a straight flash picture. One is with the modifier on. Yeah. Wow, what a difference. Well, that's it. You, you can see it, it, it works very well. Works very well. I mean, look at look at those bags under my eyes. <laughs> they look yeah. terrible didn't with like, just straight flash. Didn't like to say anything about that, but yeah. <laughs> It does certainly show. <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, you know, it's, it, that, that modifier has just scattered the light around. But yeah. what, what I like about it is that modifiers often scatter the light around. Yeah. Um, but it's still giving you some forward projection. Yes. Now, interestingly, with my, with my flash guns, when I was indoors, um, absolutely no problem whatsoever on TTL. Um, but when I went outdoors uh, and did some filling flash, it was interesting that um, it was kicking out a little bit too much mm. flash with the modifier on. Uh, yeah. So I had to knock the flash down, uh, a, well, I think a stop and a half um, yeah. to get the exposure. Uh, and I don't know why that was. Maybe it's a idiosyncrasy of the, yeah. the Nikon system or whatnot, Maybe. because you put it on outside. Yeah, and it wasn't a problem. You didn't have a, no. a, any exposure problem no. whatsoever? Mine just better to have too much light than too little, so yeah. <laughs> guess they could adjust it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's have a look at those outdoor shots with the uh, Cobra. This is straight flash, as you can see, out in the garden, uh, balancing some uh, sunlight behind, uh, filling flash. It's done what you'd expect the flash to do. It's filled in the light. It's all pretty harsh. Let's have a look at the flash modifier. <laughs> wow, look at the softness on the skin. And uh, look at the power it's got still to go through those specs. Get the eye detail there. It's a really, really good job. I'm very impressed. Let's put them up side by side. Well, the pictures speak for themselves. Obviously, the flash modifier is on the left there, the straight flash on the right. And uh, you can see what a subtle tones we're getting from the modifier. Uh, it makes a really, really big difference, I think. I'm gobsmacked at actually how well this works. We've tried flash modifiers before. Um, they scatter light around, they do a really good job. Mm. You know, my favourite is a really cheap and cheerful, um, you know, fan uh, one. It, it, yeah. it costs next to nothing, it slips in the bag. It does a, a you know, really good effect, but it is a light scattering yeah. effect. Whereas yeah. this seems to be pushing a little bit more light forward. It's, it does, yes. I think it does a better job. And I think yeah. you can control that, certainly if you're using it off camera as well so that, that you know the lights coming in from the side yeah then you know it's pushing pushing everything forwards just just a little bit more yeah. um now did you have any problems with fitting it on there no once i got used to it it fitted okay it's just that slight problem with uh, the you, weight yeah but with, that this, is with this, this little mess here you've yeah. got a problem that you can't lock that off and it I, and it fell forwards a few times didn't, yeah. didn't it but I've, I've used big flash guns and mm. to be honest i just wanted something small for yeah yeah so it may small. it may be uh not a fault of the flash but that isn't perhaps what you call a, a sort of professional level flash. no i just wanted uh, a small it's a, gun it's, it's a small little sort of mobile one Carry that gets easy. you out of a hole and yeah. so so we're not going to hold that against the the modifier because mm. this isn't actually a full size uh, flash. This is a full size flash on Minicom. This is a, 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 an SB800 and yeah. um, that fits on here. Um, absolutely. Let me just take that filter out. It fits on here. Absolutely. Beautifully. Look, you just slot that in there. Over it goes. Leave it on there and it's ready to go. I'm all fingers and thumbs here, Paul. There we go. There we go. That's it. So that is going to sit on there. And it's ready. Yeah. It's all ready to go. Look, that's it. Super. So that sits on my SB800, and I can put that on there. Yeah. There's only one problem. And what's that? I don't use an SB800. What do you use? I use an SB900. Oh, right. And it doesn't fit. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? <clears throat> the chances of that fitting on there? No chance. No. Okay, now I have um, looked at the website and somebody mm. did say they were having a problem getting onto their, their flash. Mm. And so um, they suggested putting this into some 
something warm, warming it up, maybe some hot water, and it makes it more um, pliable. Pliable, and well, then it will maybe, stretch over. Maybe, so, but <laughs> so I'm going to give that a go. So let's put some hot water in there and uh, get uh, get ready to put the uh, the clip in there. And we'll give it some uh, five minutes in there. We'll just zoom through and okay. Let's go. Ooh. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. <laughs> Don't use too hot a water. Right. Okay. Let's stretch this over. It's definitely more um, stretchy. So let's see if we can get it over this. This is a very oversized flash. This is a very uh, unusually big one. The SB900 and the 910. Go on. Oh, nearly. One more. It's a big ask. I'm not sure it's going to go. Go on. Oh, ow. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not going to go. I'm going to break something here. No, come on. I'm nothing if I'm not persistent. Let's have one more go. Let's put it flat down. I've got a corner on. No, that's not going to go. So I'm going to need a different way to fix the Cobra to my flash gun. It's interesting that they've got this little band in this little elastic band because I was thinking, what's this? Is it a bit of a hand exercise or something? Yeah. I think this is if your flash gun is actually um, you're just too big to take yeah. this because then we can Good go to a simple system of having that kept on there the entire time. Yeah. And then when we're ready to use the flash, put that on direct. Flip that over there. And it's just a simple strap system, which is what most flash modifiers normally would have anyway. That's it. You put that on there like that. And you can put the band around it yeah. uh, and hold it on. Yeah. Uh, which is great. It, you don't have the ability to put the filters in. And you don't have the ability to clip on and off quite so quickly. Yeah. But that said, yeah. it's still the same still the holding system yeah. that most flash modifiers are going to yeah. have. And when we're saying it's not quite so quick to put on and off, I mean, we're talking about, what, 30 seconds? Seconds, it's nothing. You know, you know to put that on. I mean, you know, to yeah. put this band on and over them, uh, that's kept on, obviously. So, yeah, yeah it's nothing, is it? So, no, no. so, so if fine. you do have a slightly bigger flash gun, don't despair, even if you can't get that on. Yeah. Because it. there's still that system there. What did yeah. we think? Of the Lee filters, what did we think of of, of actually changing the colour temperature? Well, like? Again, they seem to work fine. No trouble at all. I mean, we, we, we yeah, tried. To, we haven't got a lot of tungsten light in here. We no. did try and manufacture some, uh, and um, we did uh, our best. Uh, and you know, but, but it it worked. It's in the, yeah. I mean, it did balance out. It didn't did it? balance you out. Know, even though we yeah. got that yellow background. Yeah. We put the um the, you know the mild tungsten filter into the flash. Yes. Uh, and it, you know, it works. I think it really did yeah. seem to. It work. all works. The big thing for me, ultimately, is I mean, ease of use. Yes, what it looks like. Yes, it looks very professional. Um, all the rest of it. But what it comes down to is the quality of light mm. from this unit. That's it. Uh, I think you put those pictures side by side, and and the, the images just speak for themselves. You go from some um, More harsh. harsh. Cold, it, harsh, yeah. you know, direct flash pictures yeah. to suddenly, uh, I mean, something completely different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A nice soft light, still yeah. enough punch to get through to the eyes and the eye sockets. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed at this. Um, I think yeah. it's a, absolutely a great unit. I'll leave a link, uh, one of my affiliate links, down in the description um, if you're interested in getting one of these. But um, thumbs up. I think uh, yep. you can tell this has been designed by photographers. Exactly. Yeah, just right. You can tell that um, that they're thinking about what it does to the light. It's not just scattering it; it's sending it forwards. And I think they yeah. say in their marketing material that you actually get two sources of light. Mm. Um, you know, you get the scattered stuff, which is going to disappear and, and bounce back off walls and things anyway. Yeah. But you also get the flash, which is coming from this patent applied for um, reflective. Yeah. Strip it, it, yeah. it surface inside there. I don't know yeah. what's in it, but it does a great no. job of reflecting. No, it does, uh, yeah. You know, kicking. So you've got yeah. those two little bits of light coming yeah. forwards. Well so, thought out. All in all, top job, Cobra. Yeah, five out of five. We were impressed. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's one thing that I forgot to mention about the Cobra, and that is it doesn't seem to matter how much you crunch it up, it just keeps its form pops back again, which is great if you want to fold it up a couple of times and stick it in your back pocket when you're out and about doing portraits. 
And if you want to see a video I did recently about how to take better portraits, then click on this link now.